So we learned earlier in the course that if we've got um, a random variable x and we want an expression for its variance, okay, well, with the sort of the default formula, the standard formula is to say, okay, well, this is just going to be the expected value of the squares of the distance between x and its expectation, okay? And we could replace this e of x here with mu to mean the mean of x. This is sort of the general, the way the variance is defined. And we also learned along with this formula, sort of a more useful formula, one that's more practical to use. And this is, you know, we can express the variance as the difference between the expected value of the square of x, so the e of x squared, and the square of just the expectation of x. And so we're just computing the expectation of x, and then we're squaring the whole thing. Okay. And so this is sort of a condition for the population because we're looking at the random variable which represents the full distribution of our data and this is a great condition for the population and what we want to try and do is build up a similar condition something that's sort of computationally useful for the sample variance for the sample variance and so let's start off um, on this on this task by writing out just the formula for the sample variance and remember we express the sample variance of x as s subscript x all squared in contrast to how we express the population variance, which is sigma subscript x all squared. And we, and we can write out the sample variance as one on n minus one. Remember we're correcting, we lose a degree of freedom. Multiply it by the sum from i equals one to n of xi, which is a particular value of our variable x, minus x bar, which is the sample mean of our variable x all squared. Okay, so this is sort of how we define the sample variance of a, of a variable x. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to rearrange this, rearrange this so it's just a little bit more useful, okay? And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna rewrite this square as literally, literally is the product of xi minus x bar with itself. Because after all, that's what we say, that's what we mean when we say um, xi minus x bar squared. Okay, and we're gonna, do a second step, we keep this one on n minus one the same. And in our second step, we're just gonna rearrange, we're gonna rearrange everything inside these brackets. And it's just a product of two brackets, it shouldn't be too hard. And first we've got xi times xi, and so that's xi squared. And the second term we have is minus x bar times minus x bar, which is just plus x bar all squared, okay? And then we got xi times minus x bar plus minus x bar times xi, and so we're gonna get two, two times minus xi times x bar. Okay, this is the first step. We've just expanded these brackets here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply this sum separately to each of the terms here. Okay, and so we're gonna, we're gonna write out the first term is gonna be one on n minus one times the sum from i equals one to n of xi squared. And so we can't really simplify this. This is just our data squared. This is a relatively difficult thing. We can't really simplify this. And the next term is going to be, okay, the sum, just applying the same sum to the second term here from i equals one to n of x bar squared. Okay. And we're going to have a third sum. We're going to take minus two at the front. We're going to have minus two times the sum from i equals one to n, just the same sum applying to each of the terms in the sum of x bar times xi. Okay. And so we can sort of inspect each of these terms and ask ourselves, okay, can I simplify uh, this expression here? And we can't really simplify this one. But now we look at the second term and we'll see that just the sum from i equals one to n of x bar squared. Now notice that this sum indexes over i. And so anything that doesn't relate to i okay, isn't really going to be affected by this sum. It's not going to change. And so this sum is going to be, okay, for i equals one, it's going to be x bar squared plus, and then i is two, and it's just x bar squared again. And so what we're going to get is just n copies, n copies of x bar squared. And so we can replace this sum with just the number, just the number n. We're going to get n copies of x bar squared. Okay. And uh, we look at this third term here, and we notice that, okay, x bar, doesn't depend on i, and we can actually bring it out the front, just like we bought, minus two out the front. And all that's left, all that's left once we bring x bar out the front is just the sum from i equals one to n of xi. 
okay? And we'll remember if we take the sum from i equals one to n of our data and divide it by n, we get the sample mean. And so if we take the sum from i equals one to n of our data and we don't divide it by the sample mean, we're gonna get is n times the sample mean, n times the sample mean. And so we can rewrite this as minus two times the sample mean times n times the sample mean. So we can just quickly rewrite this equation here. So we're gonna get minus two times the sample mean, like we said before, x bar times n times the sample mean, okay? And we can just rewrite this one more time very quickly. We notice that this is gonna be minus two n x bar squared. Minus two n x bar squared. Okay, so we've got a long way to simplify this expression. Um, and sort of one final thing we wanna notice when we're rearranging this is that, okay, well, we can't really simplify this first term here. You know, and we've simplified the second and third terms sort of as much as we can. But we can combine now, we can combine these second and third terms because we've got plus one times n x bar squared minus two times n x bar squared. And we have one times something minus two times something. What we're gonna be left with is just minus one times something, just minus one times something. Okay, so we've got this first term, the sum of x i squareds minus, and notice this isn't in the sum, minus n times x bar squared. Okay, so this is gonna be our final equation. Um, and so if we compute or someone gives us the sum of all the squares of our data, uh, we can quite simply compute what the sample variance is gonna be by just having one on n minus one times that sum minus n times the sample mean, which is quite easy to compute, all squared. And we can see here there's quite a nice parallel with this equation up the top because of our first term here, we've got the sum of all our xi squareds divided by n minus one. That's sort of like the expected value of x squared. And our second term, we've got minus n divided by n minus one, which is very close to one times x bar squared, which is sort of nearly the expected value of x squared. And so the only difference we've got here is these sort of little corrections that we've had to make because this is not the population variance. This is not the population variance. This is the sample variance. And so we have to correct by this term out the front here, n minus one. And so now suppose that instead of making this correction for the sample variance, that we instead wanted to make this correction for the sample covariance. And remember, we can write a very similar formula up the top to the one we had earlier on for the sample covariance. And it's gonna be, okay, the covariance between two random variables, X and Y, well, that's just gonna be the expected value of X minus its mean. And if this was variance, we'd times that by itself, but instead, because it's covariance, we're gonna multiply that by Y, a random variable Y minus the mean of Y. And just like we had a you know, much nicer, more simple expression uh, for this, this covariance, for the variance, so too we've got a much nicer and simple expression um, for the covariance. And that's, you know, this is gonna be equal to the expected value of x times y minus, minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y, okay. And so this, is, this, this should look very similar to the nice formula we had for the population variance. Because if we replace y by x, we're just gonna get the expectation of x squared minus the square of the expectation of x, okay? And so that leads us to a nifty conclusion that the covariance of a variable with itself is just the variance, okay? But we can write out you know, the symbol for this. This is gonna be the sample, sorry, the population covariance, sigma xy. And so just like we came up with this nifty formula for the sample variance, we're gonna come up with a similar formula for the sample covariance. And just to, just to illustrate how similar these problems are, I'm basically gonna just erase and replace bits of this equation. So whereas before we had the sample variance, well now, we've got, now we've got the sample covariance, okay? SXY. And whereas before, Whereas before we had, you know, one and minus one times the sum from i equals one to n of xi minus x bar times xi minus x bar. Well, now we're gonna have xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar, okay? And so we can replace this second term here with yi minus y bar. And this is gonna affect how we expand this bracket in the second term here. So we can replace this whole thing. We can do this expansion again. It's going to be it's gonna be 
xi times yi, okay, minus x bar times minus y bar, so plus plus x bar y bar, okay, and we're going to get xi times minus y bar, so minus xi y bar, minus x bar times yi, so we're going to get minus yi times x bar. Okay, so we just now that same expansion, but we've got a different expression inside. And this is going to change what's in here as well, but not by a lot, not by too much. Okay, and so we can re expand this expression here. Okay, and for this first term, instead of getting the sum of xi squared, all we're going to get is the sum of xi yi. And just like with xi squared, we can't really simplify this. We've got to compute this in the data. And we sum up the second term, we're going to get the sum from i equals 1. 2n of x bar times y bar. And if we sum up the third term, we can take the minus out the front. We're going to get minus, we can take the y bar out the front because it doesn't depend on i. We're going to get minus y bar times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. And this final term is going to be a very similar situation except we can take x bar at the front and we'll be left with the sum from i equals 1 to n of not xi but yi, yi, okay. And so just like we simplified this before, we can simplify this expression in a very similar way, in a very similar way, okay. And so this is going to be equal to one on n minus one. And just like before, we can't simplify this first term. It's just too complicated. We've got to go out and compute it, or someone's got to give it to us. So we can have xi times yi. But all these other terms, we can simplify these other terms. Because remember, because x bar doesn't depend on i, and y bar does not depend on i, well, I'm just going to get x bar, y bar, i is going to go to 2, plus x bar, y bar, i is going to go to 3, and I'm just going to get n copies, I'm going to get n copies of x bar, the sample mean of x, times y bar, the sample mean of y. Okay, and a similar thing to before is going to happen with these two terms. I'm going to get the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, and if we did divide that by n, it would be x bar. Because we didn't, it's going to be n times x bar. And so we're going to get n times x bar times y bar. And we can do a similar bit of logic to this expression here. If we sum yi from i equals 1 to n and divide by n, we get the sample mean of y. Okay, but because we didn't divide by n, we're going to get n times the sample mean of y times the sample mean of x, which is out the front here. And we can rearrange this. We notice that these two terms are going to cancel out, and we're just going to be left with, we're going to be left with 1 on n minus 1 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi minus outside the sum, minus n times x bar times y bar. And this is very similar to the expression we had before. Instead, we've just replaced the second xi here with a yi, because we used to have xi squared. And we replaced this second x bar here with a y bar, because we used to have minus n times x bar squared. And so this expression is almost identical. It's almost identical. It's a very close relationship between the covariance and the variance. And so too, just like this close relationship exists in the formula for the population, covariance and variance, we're going to have this nice relationship um, between the formula for the, popula for the sample covariance and the formula for the sample variance, which I'll just write out again at the bottom here. It's going to be sx squared is 1 on n minus 1 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times itself, so xi squared minus n times the sample mean of x, x bar squared.